Hey guys, today I want to talk about a great tool available to you in Adobe After Effects that I've been using throughout most of my tutorials without ever going into too much detail. I'm talking about expressions. Rather than adding a million keyframes to animate a property manually, whoa, whoa, whoa. well, rather than adding a million keyframes, you can actually write a small piece of code and attach it to the property. This expression will then control the value of the property and automatically update it for you every frame. This can be a huge time saver and allow you to create behaviors and animations that would be incredibly tedious to set up with manual keyframes. Even though expressions are a little bit more advanced, I still consider this tutorial a part of my basic series. Now, I will assume that you watched at least a few of my tutorials and know the fundamentals of After Effects like creating a composition and setting a few keyframes, but don't stress, this is going to be a basic tutorial on expression and it's not going to be a hardcore coding session. Let's jump right into After Effects so I can show you how to create a few cool expressions. I have a very simple composition set up here in Adobe After Effects. The composition contains two layers. The first is a simple text element. The text element displays the current value of a slider expression control effect that I have applied to the control layer. You can see that the text updates automatically to reflect the current value of the slider. I will show you how these elements are linked up in a moment. You can also find all of the expressions I used in this tutorial in the description of this video. Let's animate the slider effect to increase from 0 to 100 over the duration of the composition. So create a simple keyframe at the start of your clip with the slider value at 0. Then go to the end of the composition and jack the value of the slider up to 100 to create another keyframe. If we now scrub through the composition, we can see that the text updates to show the current value of the slider. Since we are not rounding the number before displaying it, we end up with a lot of decimal points. Don't worry about it for now. Now let's create our very first expression. Select the control layer that has the slider expression control on it and reveal all animated properties by pressing U on your keyboard. As you can see, we have two keyframes on the slider effect. You can apply After Effects expressions to any property that supports keyframes. To add an expression to the slider control effect, Alt-click on the stopwatch icon. A small expression text editor will open up on the right side. You can enlarge the text error by dragging down the lower edge of the editor field. After Effects expressions use a number of statements to define how the value of the property will be controlled. These statements can be very simple or they can contain intricate logic to have the property behave in any way you want. Let's start off with probably one of the simplest expressions you can write. Simply type value into the expression editor. To apply an expression, simply click outside of the text editor. So what did the value expression do? Let's scrub through a composition and keep an eye on the slider value. Looks like the slider behaves exactly like it did before. The value animates from 0 to 100 as defined by the keyframes. The value expression simply tells After Effects to use the current value of the property. So if you are at a frame where the slider is set to 29 due to the keyframes, value will evaluate to 29 and therefore the expression will simply set the slider to 29 again. But to show you that the expression actually does something, click on the text editor field and instead of value, type a number like 33. Note that the value of the slider is now fixed at 33 and the text has automatically updated as expected. The keyframes are being totally ignored as our expression does not care about the value part of the slider effect. The expression simply says to set the value of the slider to 33, no matter what. Let's combine the two expressions we learned so far. Change the expression to value plus 33. What do you think will happen? To find out, go to the beginning of your composition. Note that even though our keyframe specifies a value of 0, we can see that the actual value of the slider is 33. That is because the expression states to use the current value of the slider, which is 0, and add 33 to it. And consequently, if you go to the end of your composition where we set the keyframe to 100, the actual value of the slider is 133, as you would expect. You can use any sort of calculations in your expressions. For example, let's set the expression to value times 2. The slider now animates from 0 to 200 because the expression doubles whatever value we set the slider to. 
let's go a little bit more crazy and type something like value times two plus value over two plus 50 into the expression for the slider control. The starting value for our slider with a keyframe value of zero ends up being 50. And at the end, when value is keyframed to be 100, the final slider value will end up being 300. If you want to remove an expression from a property, you can simply click on the expression editor, select all of the text you entered and delete it. The property will revert back to its basic behavior. Let's look at another simple expression. Add a new expression to the slider effect by alt clicking on the stopwatch icon as we did before. Simply type time into the expression editor. The time expression will evaluate to a decimal number that represents the current time position of your composition. So at one second, the value will be one, at two seconds, it will be two, and so on and so forth. The time expression is very useful for evolution or phase property on a lot of effects to have them animate automatically throughout your entire composition without using any keyframes. I also like to use it to animate elements in a sine wave pattern. You can do this by changing your expression to math with a capital M dot sin open bracket time close bracket. Math.sin is a function that is supported by After Effects and the value you pass into it, in this case we are passing the current time value into it, is used to calculate the final sine value. Remember your trigonometry? At the start of your composition with a time value of zero, the sine is zero. It then rises to one around one and a half seconds, then dips back down past zero to negative one and back up to one at a time of just under eight seconds. This behavior is very useful and you could use this expression to control the intensity of a glow effect to pulse automatically or to animate an object in your scene to bob up and down. So far, all of our expressions have only ever been a single statement, but expressions can be very complicated. Statements are always separated by semicolons, so let's add a semicolon to the end of our expression. Let me quickly enlarge the text editor a little so we can see what is going on. Just below the first line that we have, type a simple number like 34. Note that the slider value is now 34. The last statement in your expression will be evaluated to define the final value of your expression. In this case, that is 34. Delete the expression again. As before, the slider animates from 0 to 100. Let's look at another useful basic expression we can use. Wiggle. This expression is very useful for camera shakes, random object moves and many other things. Add an expression to the slider control and this time we will use the wiggle function. The wiggle function randomizes the current value of the property by a specified amount at a specified frequency, making the value wiggle. The wiggle function takes two parameters, meaning you have to provide two numbers when you use it. The first parameter specifies the frequency of the wiggle effect in times per second. The larger this number, the faster the wiggle effect will be. The second parameter specifies the wiggle amount. Let's set these values to 1 and 200 respectively. Have a look at the slider value at the beginning of your composition. It's been altered from 0 to 129. As we scrub through the clip, you can see that the value swings around wildly, always varying by up to 200 every second around its keyframe value. Before we move on, let me quickly show you a few important controls when working with expressions. Left of your expression editor are a number of switches and buttons. The leftmost icon is an equal sign and if you toggle this switch, you can enable and disable the expression as required without having to delete it. I've just disabled it and the slider is back to animating as expected from 0 to 100. Re-enable the switch and the slider value will once again wiggle around wildly. While you can find a large amount of information about what functions and statements are available to you in After Effects, there's also a quick button next to the expression editor. Click on this little right arrow to reveal a myriad of inbuilt functions that you can use when writing your expressions. I won't go over all of these, but there's functions to convert seconds to frames and vice versa, a large amount of essential vector math, basic JavaScript math like sine, cos, min, max, power and much, much more. Now let's finally look at how the text element is linked to the value of the slider effect on the control layer. For this, I'm just going to set the expression of the slider back to time so it animates from 0 to 10 over the course of the composition. Go over to your text layer and reveal the source text property on the layer. As you can see, I already have a simple expression applied to this property, which is why we could see the text automatically update to reflect the value of the slider. To show you how this expression works, I'll delete it for now. 
Reveal the slider control that you want to link up in your expression. Since we will use the pick whip icon to insert it into our expression, we need to be able to see it in the layer window. Now enable expressions on the source text property of your text layer by alt clicking on the stopwatch icon. Type quotation mark my slider value colon space quotation mark plus and then drag the pick whip icon onto the slider control on the control layer to insert it into the expression. The plus sign is just a simple way to do string concatenation and we want to append the value of our slider to our text. To the end of this expression add dot value to access the value of the slider control and to the end of that add dot to string open bracket close bracket. This tells After Effects that the plus sign we used is meant to concatenate two strings rather than perform arithmetic. Click outside of the expression editor to apply it and voila! The text is automatically updated to reflect the current value of the slider. If you want to get rid of the fractional part of the number you can alter your expression and use the math.round function when accessing the value of the slider. Very easy and it looks a whole lot cleaner. This covers the very basics. Now let's move on to dealing with position properties and moving objects around using expressions. I have a composition here that contains a simple circle. I've animated the circle to move from left to right across the screen. You can see the two keyframes here that I've set up for the position property. Let's animate the position using an expression. Alt click on the stopwatch icon for the position property and in the expression editor enter value. As before value will simply be the value of the position property at the current point in time and therefore the circle will move exactly like it did before. We did the exact same thing with the slider. What is different here though is that the position property actually consists of two parts, an x coordinate and a y coordinate. When we type value into the expression editor for the position, we specify a two part value containing the x and the y coordinate. We can actually do this more explicitly by typing open square bracket value open square bracket zero close square bracket comma value open square bracket one close square bracket and close another square bracket. Since value is the position property of the layer and the position property has two parts, value square bracket zero refers to the first part, the x coordinate, and value square bracket one refers to the second part, the y coordinate. Because our expression needs to evaluate to a two part value, we have wrapped these two parts in square brackets separated by a comma. Now change only the second part of this expression to 100. Note that the y coordinate of our layer has been fixed at 100 as specified by our expression. Let's change it back to value square bracket 1, the current y coordinate. And we're back to the original animation. Edit the expression and after value square bracket 1, just before the last closing square bracket, add plus math with a capital M dot sin open bracket time close bracket star 100. This expression will leave the x coordinate unchanged and alter the y coordinate in a sine wave motion by up to 100 pixels. If you scrub through your footage you can automatically see the circle bob up and down as it moves across the screen. Pretty cool! And it's easy to tweak the expression as needed. Change the expression to multiply time by 2 and increase the amplitude of our sine wave to 200. This makes our sine wave motion faster and it moves the circle twice the distance up or down. Before we move on to the advanced part of this tutorial, let's have some fun with the wiggle function. Delete the existing expression and instead type wiggle open bracket 1 comma 100 close bracket. Note that you can apply the wiggle function to any property no matter how many parts it actually has. This expression tells After Effects to randomly change both the x and the y coordinate of the circle by 100 pixels once a second. If you play back your animation, the circle will make a very wobbly move across the screen. Jack up the amplitude of the wiggle effect to 400. The circle will now bounce around much stronger but at the same speed, once a second. Now change the frequency to 5. The circle's position will now be altered 5 times per second randomly by up to 400 pixels. Notice how erratic that makes the movement of our circle. There's a ton of different uses for the wiggle expression. Now that you've learned to walk, let's try out some running. I will quickly run you through a much more complicated expression so you can see some of the amazing possibilities that expressions open up for you in Adobe After Effects. I have a composition here with six circles animated to move across the screen left to right. 
let's add a wiggle expression to the position of each of these circles to wiggle them once a second by up to 400 pixels. Copy this expression across to all the position properties for all the circles. Playing back the animation now, it looks more like a swarm of circles floating across the screen in a much more organic pattern. What we will do now is add an expression to each of the circles to change their color to red if they are close to any other circle in the composition. The color will change towards green the further they are away from all other circles. Imagine they get angry and red whenever they are on top of each other and chill out and turn green if you give them some space. For this, select the first circle layer and apply a hue and saturation effect to it. Tick the colorize checkbox in the effect parameters. Note that changing the colorize hue has no effect at this moment. That is because our circle is fully white and no color will stick. Before we can animate the hue, we first need to lower the colorize lightness to around minus 50. Changing the colorize hue property now actually changes the color of the circle. To make the color more intense, also increase the saturation to 100. Note that the colorize hue value of 0 will make our circle red and a value of 100 will set the circle to solid green. We now need to write an expression that will return a value between 0 and 100 based on how close this circle is to any other circle in the composition. For this, alt click on the stopwatch icon next to the colorize hue property to add an expression. I will drag the bottom of the expression editor down to enlarge our text area. Hopefully it will make it a little bit easier for all of you guys to see what I'm typing. One quick tip before we get started, comments. If you write complicated expressions, you will most likely benefit from putting some comments into the expression. Comments will have no effect on the expression, they are merely notes for your own sanity. You can write a single line comment by starting the line with a double forward slash. To write a multi-line comment, start the comment with a forward slash star and end it with a star forward slash. But now let's dive into the expression. Given the current circle that we're applying the expression to, we need to calculate the distance in pixels to the closest other circle in our composition. Actually, I will not read this part out to you, it would be too boring, so I will speed through this section. To follow along with the tutorial, just copy and paste the entire expression from the description of this video into your expression editor. I've also added plenty of comments to explain exactly what the expression is doing. If we now scrub through the composition, you will see that our circle automatically changes color. In this particular frame, it is pretty green as it is a little bit away from all of the other circles. But as we drag it closer towards the other circles, it automatically changes color and turns an angry red. As we move it further away again, it returns to its calm green color. Now that is very awesome. The last thing for us to do is apply this expression to all of the layers in our composition. Now you could manually select and copy the expression across, but since the expression is a part of the hue and saturation effect we apply to the topmost circle layer, we can simply copy and paste the entire effect. So we'll select the layer with the hue saturation effect, select the effect itself and copy it. Then go through all of the other layers in your composition and paste the effect onto them. I'm simply using the keyboard shortcuts Ctrl C and Ctrl V to do this right here. And we're done. Return to the beginning of your composition and let it play. We now have a swarm of circles floating across the screen that intelligently change color based on their minimum distance to their siblings. Note in this frame the circles that are clustered together are red, but the ones further out to the side are greenish and yellow because they have some more space. Same in this frame. The two overlapping circles are deep red and the others are varying shades between red and green based on the distance to the nearest circle. I would say this is a very cool thing that you can do with expressions, but really the possibilities are endless. I hope this tutorial has whet your appetite to learn more about them and start to experiment using them in your own visual effects. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. If you like to show some support, please subscribe, like or share. It greatly helps out a lot with the channel and if you're hungry for more, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later. Uh oh. Holy.